just going to be continuing from there and having more deep dive into compensation. And before that, I just want to say I'm be introducing most of the topics for you today, but I'm not going to go deep, deep into compensation right now because that is a exclusively that is more into the compensation module specifics. I'm going to be going more into the details and how you can create a compensation package, grades, eligibility rules. This is the scope of this particular course because if I deep dive into it, probably I'll need at least a week to get into each and every topic, each and every nuances around it. So I'm going to be only going at a high level of how to create, but still you should be able to, at the end of this course, you should be able to create a comp package, plan, create, create profiles, and then the eligibility rules for each of them. So that is specifically the motive of this particular module that I'm going to be taking for you. All right, so like I said, Compensation, what exactly could constitute a compensation? Number one, it could contain your compensation elements or earning elements, your grades, grade profiles, packages, and plans. Packages is compensation package specifically is nothing but the compensation package is going to contain all of this. It's going to contain the grade, grade profiles and also your compensation plan. And again, that is going to be driven by an eligibility rule. What exactly do you mean by an eligibility rule as far as a compensation package is concerned? Now, what I've done over here right now is I went to Carol Lee's profile. In Carol Lee's profile, I picked the compensation package of Carol Lee, which is team member. And how this is actually assigned over here is at the time of hire, or when Carly is going to have a job change, which is like a promotion, demotion changes in the organization that she is actually working, or any other actions. So the compensation can also be changed, and you're going to assign a compensation package directly to an employee. Or we have some eligibility rules which are going to drive this. All right. So, like I said, you can directly assign a compensation package to an employee or you can have what is called as eligibility rules, which are going to drive this particular compensation package, which means this particular compensation package. I can say that this is eligible for management level seven or eight and those who do not belong to sales. So what exactly it means is somebody at management level seven or eight, or you can assume that in certain organizations, you're going to have what is called as levels. So probably at a person at level one could be at a level and then one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way could go to eight or even 10 levels as well, depending on how the organization structure is going to look like. And for this particular organization and this particular package that we have, we are seeing that it is for management levels seven and eight, which is at supervisory level and individual contributor level. And again, see here the rule says the job profile is going to be salary. So I do have a job profile which could possibly say that it is for salaried people or salaried job profile people organization is going to be or is not going to be rather sales so for anybody who's outside of sales i'm just only reading the rule that we have and then we'll get more into this we will say what exactly how to create eligibility rules and everything as well now what i'm going to say is for this particular package it is eligible only for those people who are at management level seven and eight and they are part of a job profile, which is called as salaried, and they are not part of the sales organization hierarchy. Clear on this, this rule, the organization and the superior organization compensation for now understand that the super hierarchy does not report to sales. We will deal with a little bit more depth when we get to the hiring part. For now, just remember that they do not report to a sales hierarchy or they are not part of the sales superior supervisory organization level. This is just a sample rule we have. 
So all that it means is only those folks who fit in this particular criteria can be assigned the compensation package of team member. Yes, I heard somebody. We just go to the next one. If you see what exactly is going to be part of a compensation package, number one, just like what we have for everything, number one is going to be effective rate. From when it's going to be effective. Here, what you see is the current date over here right now. But this is like, you know, the current effective one is what you see over here. It could have something historic as well. But what you see is as on date, what is the effective one? That is what you see over here. Next, what is going to be the name? And if I want to give some description to this, I can give it over here. The eligibility rules. Next, the total base pay range. Range is going to come directly from the compensation package or the grade grade profiles. So next thing is going to be uh, you just leave all of these. You know, these are something a little bit advanced and will be dealing only with the ones which are necessary at this level because too much of information will be overwhelmed us sometimes. Next, primary compensation, pay yeah. range segment again that is going to come from the grade yeah. range that we have. Midpoint is going to be the midpoint, say, if a person's compensation range at that level or that particular profile is going to be, say, 80 to 120k, the midpoint or the median possibly could be at somewhere around 100k. Right? Clear on that? Any questions? I heard somebody on YouTube. Next, like I said, what exactly is going to be in my compensation package? Number one, I'm going to have compensation plans, for example. I've created this particular compensation package called as team member. And I, since I'm going to be part of a global organization, I can have the same compensation package used for all the different countries at the same level, which means the same team member who's going to be in New York, Japan, or in Europe can have the same compensation package, but I can have different plans assigned for each of them. Something like for here, I have one which is going to be for eligibility rule, say it is for Japan. If the person is going to be working out of Japan, I need to have a compensation plan which is going to be having some other allowances specific to Japan. And if it's going to be in the US, it's going to be something different. So like I said, I'm going to create just one compensation package for a team member for which I want to define that this is not going to be part of sales and they're going to be at a management level seven or eight and i can have the same compensation package used across my organization in every geography which is in japan in in apac in the us everywhere i can use the same compensation package but have different compensation plans for each of them and everybody who belongs to the same level. Here on this, for example, let me just open the salary compensation plan and show you what exactly it is. So now we have a batch of around 15 folks right now, and all of us are across different geographies, and each of us will have different compensation plans. For example, this work may have just base pay only. Aryan, who's out of Europe, may have something different. He may have a compensation plan, plus a family allowance, plus he may have other relevant details and plans as well. And there could be somebody who's in India as well, Nishant or others who's in India, they may have like a basic HRA, family allowance, car allowance, etc. And if I'm going to have another person who's sitting out of you, Australia, in Australia, the compensation package is going to be completely different. You're going to have a base pay plus a housing, plus a car allowance, plus a metro allowance, etc. So it is going to vary from place to place and from country to country and locations, geographies, everything. And again, one most important thing is if all of them are at the same level, I can say I can create just one compensation package for all of them and have different plans assigned based on certain criteria, which could be like location, levels, grade profiles, etc. could be anything, even it could be your grade package, sorry, your management levels, job profiles, families, etc.
everything i can create specific ones based on my requirement clear on that any questions you so one different shooter i will just show you what exactly it is is just here to help you understand a little bit better as well if you see number one i'm just opening two different salary plans over here one this is for the us and this one is more for japan if you see the compensation element over here this is specifically a family allowance and here i have a compensation element just tied to your ctc or your offer letter that you might see and if you move from one country to another country obviously the compensation element is going to be different so if you're going to be in india it's going to be different if you're going to be in the us it's going to be another one so from country to country it is going to be completely completely different it's never going to be the same <clears throat> so if i have a compensation element i say that this compensation element is called as allowance because this is a family allowance plan or family elements compensation plan which i'm going to be building for japan so the compensation element specific for this is called as allowance and the currency is going to be japan and the frequency is going to be monthly and when i go to the us the similar one for us all that it is going to contain is the compensation element which is called as base pay that's all it's going to be very very simple and lean over here i don't have anything otherwise and if i come over here for japan the family allowance would be like 10000 yen for spouse and 5000 yen for each child that the employee has so and i'm going to be building specific rules over here which is going to say how many children that that particular person has as the legal spouse plus children all those rules and going to be building it if a person has just one that's a spouse plus one child he's going to get an allowance of 15000 yen spouse plus two children 20 spouse plus three children 25 and if he's going to have just one child and no spouse it's just going to be 5000 two it's going to be 10 three it's going to be 15000 and if the person has only a spouse then it's going to be 10000 yen per month so this is typically how your compensation plan is going to be designed clear on this and the eligibility rules i've just given it at a high level for you to understand how this typically works and how this is going to tie down to your compensation ctc that you see on your offer letter or in your organizations clear on this any questions similarly you can correlate to so many things if i'm going to put something for india for example if a person is working out for metro say for example if he is out of delhi or mumbai or i am going to say that the person is eligible for a metro allowance for some traffic and fuel allowance so my eligibility rule for that case could look like if my work location is delhi or mumbai i am going to give him a petrol allowance so say of 2000 per month that's it very simple and if the person the same thing in us i might say that for people who are working out of the east coast because of the fuel and everything i'm going to give them a monthly allowance of say 100 dollars as commutation expenses that's all it's only for the east coast there i could bring in something like a location hierarchy so i can just tie down that particular location hierarchy to over here and i say this particular person is working out of the location and i can say us east zone location hierarchy so which means all the us locations which are on the east coast i could say that i'm going to give them a 100 dollars commutation allowance per month simple clear on this on how the compensation plan can be created or what exactly is the purpose of a compensation plan and again if i go to the compensation package uh, one employee who is assigned this compensation package may have multiple plans based on all of these eligibility rules and this is the information that is going to flow across to the payroll team when you're going to get your paychecks and if so because see over here the default currency in the tenant is currently set up as ina see because this tenant currency is set up as ina that is why you see it as ina and in a typical case it could be based on the location where your organizations 
higher headquarters is typically. So if, for example, if it is Facebook, they are going to be operating out of US. So your base currency, as we call it, is set up in US. For example, if you're going to be implementing it for Nissan, Nissan that is based out of Tokyo, you're going to have your base currency set up as yen. That is Japanese yen. So that is how it is. So you may not see all the conversions over here. All right. So like I was saying, the same compensation package could have multiple plans, uh, which could be eligible for a lot of folks. For example, I might create a compensation plan based on my location because for India, my compensation plan is going to be different. So here, what I will do is I'll create a compensation plan for team member India where I could put in all the compensation plans for the basic HRA. So HRA, I might say that if you're if you're working out of a metro location, your HRA could be like 50% of basic. Otherwise, it could be 40% of your basic. And I could write some rules like that. And again, if the organization is going to say that you are eligible for a fuel allowance, if you're managerial and above, I could write a rule over here, which is going to say if you're managerial and above, great then you are eligible for a fuel allowance of say 1200 or whatever is going to be the organization policy per month so all those rules and everything i can just bring in over here and say that this is the compensation package for anybody who is working out of india very simple as that and again here we have seen a compensation package which is written at more of a job or more at a level Based on the level, we have returned these compensation packages. But this need not be the criteria or this need not be the life situation. Because in a life situation, in a life project, it depends purely on how I'm going to be designing my system. When I go to my design sessions, we have to decide how I'm going to be making my compensation package, whether I want to have it at a geography level or if I want to have it at a grade or a management level kind of a criteria. That's purely based on how I this go for the design sessions. But ideally, in a real world or recommended scenario, will be to have these compensation packages set up at a geography level because each country is going to have a different salary package structure. So it is also easier if I set it up at a geography level. It is easier for me to actually have this tied down to my offer letter when I go for my hiring or when I go for my change of related processes. Make sense? Rather than having it at an individual grade or grade profile or high structure, it always makes sense to create one package at least, at least for country or geography level. Make sense to you? Any questions? When you create the package, the most important thing I will need is a compensation plan. And this is a bottom up structure. So when I create my compensation package, the thing I need to have is my great, great profiles. And then the, of course, the elements, first thing I need is the compensation element. Let's, let's say, so Ketika, if you're working for say India, and we are going to design a compensation package for you, the first and foremost thing I need to say is, if you are working out of India, I need to create compensation elements. Elements are going to be like your basic, HRA, allowances, other pays, etc. These are going to be the compensation elements. And then I need to create my grades, grade profiles based on this particular grade who's eligible for what. So if you are a person is at a managerial level, the grade, grade profiles could be created as managerial grade and grade profiles. And each of them will have a salary range which is going to be distinct from one another. Right? So and then I will go next for the compensation plans, which could be like Say if you are, if Ketika is working at a managerial level, she is she is eligible for a few elements. And if Ketika is going to be working out of say a metro city like Mumbai or out of ten, then you are going to be eligible for a metro elements or a higher HRA elements. And then once I create all of this, I'm going to tie all of this together in a compensation package. Clear on this? We'll be of course seeing this next. Just I just wanted to give you a high level of how. All of this looks in the tenant, and then I will jump into the deck, and then we'll show you all that. Any questions here from the other team members? Are there anything which is not is there something that is not clear? Let me know. 
All right, let's go on to the next. Let me just go to the so the compensation element is going to be your primitive thing that you will be creating. So you may have n number of different compensation elements created for a plan. So So if you see over here, or oh, let me, yeah, this is better one. So this is, like I said, a family allowance plan for Japan that we have created. So what is going to be the allowance element? Sorry, what is going to be the compensation element? Which means this particular allowance plan that I have created, what is the element that is going to be showing up in my CPC or further? in my pay structure here i just use it as allowance i could use even a specific one called as family allowance i could use n number of different ones as per my choice tomorrow if i'm going to create something like a commutation allowance or in europe it is very common if common for people to get reinvent of their commutation allowance on a day-to-day -day basis so i need to see compensation plan is going to be commutation allowance for europe and your compensation element is going to be reflected as commutation elements and it's going to be something like say 10 euros daily or approximately 300 euros a month to be that i want that to be designed so the compensation element here is going to be like commutation elements so i could have multiple such compute compensation elements based on the plan that i'm going to be having it so what exactly is going to be a compensation package so we just saw a few things about it earlier so the first and foremost thing like i said when i'm going to have a compensation package i need to have an eligibility rule that is going to be always sitting at the top of the stack where it is going to say this compensation package is going to be eligible for a certain population what is that population is what i need to define it first I need to say that this particular compensation package is going to be eligible only for certain population for folks who are based on Europe or I could have it as a geography level or I could have it based on the management level. Management level is going to be like six, seven and above. I'm going to do it or possibly if the person is working out of say a remote location, I can have a different compensation package for them and I can create it based on job family. I can create it based on any criteria where I can use the employee, that's all. There is no hard and fast rule that I need to do it. But when I go for the designer, I try to put it in the optimum way that I can create so that I'm going to have fewer rules created and it's easy for me to implement and also have this used in the future for any support purposes. That is the main criteria that I'm going to be looking at when I go for my design sessions. Next, we are going to have the grades. So what are the different grades, grade profiles and everything? steps um i will just give you only at a high level but i don't want to go in depth into that for example if i go into this particular okay so um for example assume that this is just a question for everybody so if the compensation grade or the grade profile for say a consultant level person and if the salary range is going to be like say 80 to 120k a year and when a person enters the consultant level he could be paid like 80,000 and as he progresses there is going to be a small increment in the salary based on what you might call as a consultant one consultant two consultant three etc i could have some steps in the progression of the person or if you are going to be hiring somebody who's already a seasoned consultant i may not put him at 80000 bracket rather i might put him something at around 90 or 100k because my salary range is still 80 to 120k so i could put him at something around 90 to 100k per year package bracket correct so this particular increment is what we call it as step in every grade profile, I'm going to have an incremental step in the compensation, which is going to be like each and every increment to the package. Like I said, 80 to 100.
my package or my salary range that for this particular person when he starts with 80k after a year probably after his performance review i could put him at an 85 or a 90k package based on his performance but what exactly is the step progression is what we call it as grade steps see here we have like segment one segment two segment three four and the midpoint, which is going to be, of course, the median for this particular one, because here the range is going to be 55 to 100. And what exactly is going to be, and how these are all derived, this is purely based on business logic. And there could be like different rules and different business criteria, which will define this based on how the organization wants to set this up. Because this could be even based on current employees who are like, two or three year old consultants at this level, or it could be like seasoned people when I'm going to be hiring somebody at say this particular experience level, what is going to be the midpoint salary? I'll be designing all of this based on my criteria or what I'm going to be getting from the business. Purely organization specific data only. Clear on that. Any questions on what exactly grade and grade profile steps are? All right, next plans. So we saw about compensation plans. Basically, what is going to be the different plans at a package level and who's going to be eligible for what pays at different times. And that is typically what a compensation plan is going to look like. And again, I'm going to have different eligibility rules which are going to drive all of this. And each employee may have one or more compensation plans in as per the eligibility rules that I'm going to set it up as a package. And again, I can have a salary plan. I can have an hourly plan. We can have allowance, bonus, commission, one-time payment. So um, before we go into almost, I'll just quickly run through all of these. Uh, do everybody know? Precise, precise. So for the rest of the folks, one-time payment plan is something that I'm going to be giving an employee as a one-time date. So it could be like something like because of COVID, certain organizations gave something like a COVID-related allowance just to support the family. Or for example, if you're going to be joining an organization, you could get something like a one-time relocation allowance, or you could get something like a one-time joining bonus. All of that is what is called as one-time payment plan. Next, we have commission plan. This is more for either the sales and marketing folks or for the folks who are there in the C-suite level people and who ideally bring in business to the organization. They could be part of so many different compensation, sorry, commission plans. And in US, it is given a lot of different terms, long-term incentives, short-term incentives. This could also be called as incentive plans in the US because we have like short-term incentives, long-term incentives based on the level that you are there and all of that constitutes a commission plan bonus plan or in easier terminologies you can say something like a variable bonus based on your performance and based on the organization's performance for that particular period under question next allowance plans i think we have already discussed a lot of that allowance plan something like a communication allowance something like your family allowance or your metro allowance or in India, you could have something like an HRA, city allowance. All that is going to be constituted as a part of your allowance plan. Next, hourly plan. If you are going to be, if your pay structure is going to be like you are going to be paid hourly, you are going to be handled as an hourly plan. And salary plan. Uh, just have to remember only one thing over here when we come to salary plan. Not all salary plans are paid at a monthly level. In India, in Europe. Australia and certain other regions, it is usually salary plan is usually monthly, but in US, the salary plan is those who are who are voted for product of US probably might know. The salary plan in US, like I said yesterday, is usually bi weekly, bi weekly means once in two weeks, that's fortnightly. All right, in US, the salary plan is usually bi weekly, whereas for the rest of the locations it is usually monthly just a default one it doesn't mean that it cannot be overridden but usually in us people get their paychecks once in two weeks so when you go to a live client and they mean when you configure a salary plan people only use the terminology salary plan and if it's 
US, you just need to get the kind of an assistance to understand whether they mean a monthly or a bi-weekly because predominantly it is bi-weekly bi bi for all of US. So you just have to note that particular point alone as far as salary plans are concerned. All right. The next thing, the compensation elements. So we saw about compensation elements, what it's going to be like. So we may have a one-time one -time payment. You could have a base pay if it is going to be out of US. And in India, you have so many other different plans. If it's going to be in Singapore, Europe, Japan, or Australia, you could have different elements based on the location and the statutory laws over there. And what exactly happens is all of this is going to what constitute a compensation package. Your eligibility rules, your grades, profiles, plans, elements, all of this is going to actually contain or it's going to constitute what my compensation package is going to look like. And I'm going to have this assigned to my employee based on the eligibility rules. That is number one. And again, the most important thing is post creation of the compensation. The compensation package has a touch point with the payroll earnings. So what happens is I'm going to say that this particular person is eligible for a compensation plan X, Y, Z, for example, and he's going to have a compensation element. This compensation element is going to flow directly to my pay earnings. Clear on this. Say if you're going to have a base pay of say hundred thousand dollars a year, that is going to automatically reflect reflect in your paycheck as hundred thousand dollars a year. Or if you're going to get paid monthly, that's going to reflect at eight thousand three hundred a month. So it's going to reflect in a similar way. Clear on what exactly compensation package, eligibility rules, plans, elements, and payroll on itself. Any questions on this? Any questions, team? So, or do you want me to proceed further? All right. So, like I said earlier, compensation plan package is nothing but a grouping of grades, compensation plans, eligibility rules. Of course, going to be driving all of this. This is typically how a compensation plan is going to be designed as well. So, the most important thing that I need before creating a compensation plan is I need to have at least one or more compensation plans created. So the prerequisite for any creation of any compensation package is number one, the compensation plan. Excuse me. Compensation plan is going to be the first and foremost prerequisite for my compensation package. Right. And also, I can view in the worker profile, I can view the person's compensation package, the grade, the grade profile. As well. This is all there in my worker profile. And like I said, I can assign it directly at the worker profile level, or I can have eligibility rules, which are going to drive all of this. So based on my eligibility rules, I can say that this particular person is going to be eligible for the compensation package team or whatever is going to be the compensation package that I'm going to be creating. Concentrate as much as I can because I don't want this to be overwhelming for you. That is why because I can take this particular session for even another 20 hours as well, but I don't want to go so much deep dive into it because I want you to basically understand what a compensation package is going to be. That is why I'm just going probably at the top. I'm not going deep diving into this as well. Compensation package, but I'm not going to show you about creating the elements and everything because I don't want you to get into elements right now. We are only going to be creating a compensation package from scratch using eligible rules which are already available in the system because I don't want you to get overwhelmed with eligibility rules and everything. But we are going to create a package up next. All right. So that while is what you're doing, we should the next follow standard. along and do. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Okay. Yep, yeah, definitely. All right, so like I said, pre prerequisite for creating a package. Number one, I should have at least one, at least one compensation package, the compensation plan for my eligibility rules. And also I need to have my eligibility rules because I need to define for which population 
am I going to create this particular compensation package for without knowing for whom I will be creating? It's going to be extremely difficult for me to create a compensation package. All right. So now let's get started and create a sample compensation package. Like always, I go to the search and then I say comp package. And this is going to be an activity for you. It is just try to only create something which is simple. Don't deep dive into all of this and don't try to reinvent the wheel at this stage. At this stage, don't try to reinvent the wheel. That's what I would request because this is a little bit advanced topic. So I want you to more concentrate on using existing ones for the time being. And then we can go into the deep dive and you can create your own compensation rules, eligibility, grades, everything. But for the time being, please only stick on to the basics for today. Tomorrow we can definitely do it. You can actually deep dive into it and all those things that you can do. I'm just going to be creating a test package. And then I'm going to say that this is going to be eligible for a certain company or an organization. So let me say that I already have a rule. And this is for Global India LLP, which is a company. And if I want to view this rule, like I said, just click on this three dots, which we call it as related actions. Click on this rule. So this is always what I use because it is easy for me to view because the name might be misleading at some time. So what I do is I just go to this. I say that this is going to be for compensation group. It's going to be salary and it is for management levels at compensation, which is at two and above. So it's going to be for all manager levels or management levels of two and above at vice president, director, manager, everybody. I'm going to be using this particular eligibility rule, which means this compensation package is only eligible for this particular population. And I can, of course, have multiple eligibility rules as well. I can say that this particular person is based out of India and this particular person is going to be based for this particular department, say for sales department, I think you were asking me earlier for sales. I'm going to create one package and for non sales, I'm going to create another package. I can do it that way as well. Next, what is going to be the grade that I want to have for this particular person? So I can say something like I will just put a basic one. I'm just going to say it is going to be a base pay. OK, so not having that. Okay. So let's have something like Because the thing is like certain grades have been created without the access to us. So let me just give one simple one. Let me just choose grade A for company as X. So what it is, if I want to view it, I just have to click on the related actions. If you see the compensation package, and then I go to this, then view my compensation grade. So what exactly is the compensation? Great. I'm going to be having for this. I can view those details as well because I need to know what exactly I'm creating. What are the pay elements? What is going to be the compensation basis? And what is going to be the min and the maximum structure in this is an SGD, which is Singapore dollars. That's okay. For now, I just want to understand what I'm actually creating. That is the first thing. So I've added my compensation grades over here. Next, I'm going to be adding my compensation plans. So let me see that. I'm just going to be adding base simple one. I'm just going to be adding only. A... Right, so I think created this. I think they created without the access and everything. So let me put one salary plan, a simple salary plan. Let me just create or let me just use a salary plan, which we already have. So the same X company, I'm going to use this salary plan called as X company. And if I want to view this, I just have to hit right click on this and then say view in new tab and I'll be able to view the details of this particular compensation plan which is salary for company X. So I've just chosen a salary plan so it's easy for everybody to understand and it says over here country eligibility is going to be is France or Singapore. I've already chosen the great profile which is specific to Singapore and then I can say the compensation element is going to be base pay. And once I create this, I'm going to say this is going to be done. And I don't have anything to do with the compensation basis. I just did it here. And now I've just created my first compensation package. And 
I can assign this compensation package either based on this eligibility rule that I have, or I can directly assign it at an employee level, either when I'm hiring him or when the employee is going to have a change in the compensation structure, either we have promotion, job changes, location changes, or department changes, anything of that sort. Based on that particular criteria, I can make changes over there. Clear on that? Any questions? So how to create your first compensation package? This is the way you are going to be creating. And I will share this particular material across to you as well that has some more details, but it might be a little bit overwhelming. But just stick on to the basics at this moment only. And tomorrow we'll have some 10 minutes dedicated in the start of the session, especially for any questions that you have or you might have encountered for creating a compensation package. Clear on this? Any questions? Like I said, effective date, I usually give only 11900 unless and otherwise that is a valid requirement for me to give another date because I could even have it like, you know, because of the post COVID era, there were lots of changes in the compensation packages that were there because certain organizations say that they no longer want to pay the commutation elements because of the work from home and everything, culture and everything. Else. So they made some changes in the existing compensation package and say that it was effective from say the 1st of April 2020, the commutation elements was no longer available as a part of the CTC, they knocked it out. So for such cases, they used effective date concept. Rest apart, for all practical purposes, I would still give my effective date as 1900 for anything that I'm going to be building in the system. Probably that's just a recommended approach. If you have a valid reason, otherwise you can use your own data, including the current data as well. All right, clear on this. Any other questions on how to create your first compensation package? And yeah. I've just talked on to the basics only. I'm not gone into creating an eligibility rule, but today activity for you is create a first, create a simple compensation package and try to go through all the elements which are there. And you can go to the compensation package of Carol Lee, or you can go to the compensation package of the other folks as well, be it Joy Banks or Logan McNeil, and look at their compensation package, which is there. All right, that is going to be a little bit better because it's not going to contain much of junk data. And you can view their compensation package, try to relate it to your own compensation structure that you have in your CDC. And then it will make sense. And once you are clear with this, create a compensation package and still you feel clear, you can go on to create a sample eligibility rule only. Create very, very simple eligibility rules. The way you do it is, so you can do it either in two ways, when you go to edit or in creation, you come over to eligibility rules over here. So I'm going to say that this is effective from today's day. I come over here to eligibility rules. Okay, so I do not have that option. Okay, we'll deal with this later because I don't want to get into that right now because I have to teach you one more screen for that. And from there you have to create it. So for now, just use only the existing rules. I do not want to get into that creation of the eligibility rules at this moment. But so far, is it clear on what exactly the grade profile, what is the compensation package, what is the plan, everything is so try to go through this, create a simple compensation package for yourself based on what you might have seen or your own experience and see the different elements. And that's going to be the activity for you today. Clear? And I will share this particular package, sorry, this particular deck with you after the class today. All right. And you can go through slides 15 onwards. That is going to contain instructions of how the compensation package can be created. Clear, clear. Any other questions here? So if you want to assign a different compensation package to say an existing worker, that will be part of a change of transaction, which we'll see next week after this. And tomorrow I know you're going to have a lot of questions on how the compensation package is going to be, how the grades, grade profiles, the plans, elements are all going to be, but for now, try to create one and you will find it 
quite interesting and you will learn a lot of 